We're going to look at basic sources of information. We are going to talk about how information is organized, how to select a topic, and the different layers of research. Organization here at the GHC library. We are a lot of these principles you will be able to apply to other libraries and we will talk about what other library systems might use so you're familiar with those things but um, we are going to also focus on how GHC is organized since that's where we are and who we are and what we're learning about. Alright, how are we organized at Grace Harbor College? How, When you walk into the library you see all kinds of shelves of books, how are those organized? Those books are organized using the Dewey Decimal Classification System. This was created in, oh, say around the 1870s. These are organized by subject disciplines. So all the books about psychology are grouped together, all the books about business are grouped together, etc. Now it didn't used to be this way. It's, it's, that seems very obvious to us now because of course that's how we do things. But back in the, say, 1800s and prior to that, books weren't organized in that way. Basically the first book that was purchased is book number one and that was put on the shelf. Next to that was book number two, book number three, etc. They just had numbers on them, plain and simple, or some sort of system like that. Uh, possibly alphabetical, whatever the system they were using. And it didn't really matter that book number one was on gardening and book number two was on business and book number three was on uh, medicine. It didn't really matter that everything was different like that because the people themselves never got to go and browse the shelves. You would go up to a desk, you would ask for what you want, someone would maybe vanish into a back room where you never got to see, and they would come back with your, your item. So it didn't really matter that the books weren't grouped by subject. But there came a time where a guy came along. His name was Melville Dewey. He was a real mover and shaker in the library world back in the 1870s. And he thought, well, you know, if we actually organize the books in a way that made sense, in a way that um, people could find them and, you know, put them all together, then people would be able to find their own. <laughs> they would be able to find their own books. So that's why he came up with the classification system um, using the different subjects. So, for example, um, everything in the with a call number of 150 whether it be 151 152 153 etc everything from 150 to 160 is about psychology of some sort they all might be different like 151 might be abnormal psychology and 152 might be um, parapsychology etc etc but they're all some type of psychology he's the one who came up with that idea and, and that was great. It really revolutionized the way libraries were organized and how people got to information. It made it a lot easier. People were able to browse the shelves and see what they were looking for. Now, once that kind of t took hold and became more popular, another system came along, and that would be the Library of Congress, our National Library. They came along and they said, oh, well, now that you've got that figured out, we're going to improve upon it. So they waited until he had sort of sorted that out. And they came along and they started with the letters of the alphabet. So, for example, um, the letters, A, B, C. So a call number in Dewey Decimal classification might be something like 153.A4762. Uh, that same book in the Library of Congress classification might be something like H R thirty six forty seven point A Z twelve F seven. It might have it's got it's more of a number letter kind of thing. So they start with they started them automatically with twenty six categories. So there's a little more refinement in the Library of Congress classification system. Uh, most universities use Library of Congress. Uh, it is a little bit more, as I said, refined when you're dealing with larger numbers of books. So if you've got a, a library that's five or ten million volumes, it's, it's um, a little bit better structure to have Library of Congress. Most universities use Library of Congress classification. So if you're looking at the University of Washington library catalog online, for example, you're probably going to see call numbers that look completely different than the ones we use here. The idea is the same. Things on the same topic are grouped together.
So that's pretty, you know, that's pretty simple. The idea is there. Things that are on one topic are grouped together. But the call numbers will look a little different. Here, um, from where we are, the closest uh, Evergreen uses Library of Congress, uh, St. Martin's, things like that. So we don't use it here, but you will uh, probably see it if you transfer to another school. So that's how traditionally libraries organize information. We came up with a system of numbers that apply to different top subjects, and you classify that way. That's how we're organized. Other things that we organize at GHC, we have some special collections. Uh, we're still using the Dewey Decimal Classification, still using that, but in our special collections we have reference. So reference materials are separated out of the regular materials, but still using the Dewey Decimal numbers. So if you're in the main collection, you're going to go to the 150s for psychology. If you're in the reference collection, you're still going to go to the 150s for psychology, but you'll be getting reference books like encyclopedias and dictionaries, things like that. Our media collection, that's a special collection in our library, so that's all of our videos, DVDs, CDs, things like that. Those are going to be grouped together, still organized again by Dewey Decimal, but those are grouped separately. Our ESL materials are organized by topic as well, um, and those are in a separate area in our ESL area and our magazines are separated out. That's a special collection that we have uh, separated out from the books. They're not mixed in but they are also organized by classification. So you'll still find those in the same way if you're looking for psychology journals you'll still go to the 150 section. So, so those are some of the special collections that we have in our library.